This is me. Just kidding. This is me. My name is Amanda, and welcome to my podcast where I will be talking about pop culture, music, film, drama, and fan videos. Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Always Popular. I'm Amanda, your host, and let's get into this week's episode. So just recently, Nickelodeon and Paramount Plus together made a deal to make a sequel for the Nickelodeon TV show from the early 2000s called Zoe 101. Literally, the movie is called Zoe 102. Now, with this movie comes a big backstory between the main character, Zoe, who is played by Jamie Lynn Spears and Alexa Nicholas and Dan Schneider. Now, before diving into the details, the real question is, what was the purpose of Zoe 102? Why was it a movie that was 15 years in the making? And most importantly, why does it exist? This video is on why no one asked for Zoe 102. Normally, I don't rant about how bad movies are, but I feel like this one may be necessary. As someone who really loved the show growing up, the movie didn't live up to any of the hype. So before we get started, we're going to have to go back to the beginning. Most people who didn't grow up to Nickelodeon in the early 2000s as a teen like me, Zoe 101 was a decent good show back then when it premiered in 2005. The show centers around the life of Zoe Brooks and her little brother Dustin who end up at this boarding school that used to be just for boys. Characters become best friends and some are just casual friends with new roommates like Nicole, Dana, and Lola, along with guy friends like Michael, Logan, and best friend and Chase. Long story short, Chase always had a crush on Zoe since they first met and she was too oblivious to see that. One of the biggest things on this show is the romance that Zoe and Chase had for each other and it took four seasons too long to finally make them a couple at the end of the finale. So now, years later, this movie comes out, Zoe and Chase trying to make up for their past failed relationship and how they got a shitty relationship and went back to being awkward friends. Well, sadly, that's not the only thing that's awkward. The definition of this movie is awkward and very cringy. Some people who have grown up to the show may say their acting was cringy on the show, but at least it was better written than the movie. The movie is as equivalent to Mean Girls 2. No one asked for Mean Girls 2 either. No offense. Back to Zoe 102. There are a few reasons why I think Zoe 102 was made, and it's not for good reasons for the most part. First of all, anyone who knows or was a fan of Jamie Lynn Spears knows that she's Britney Spears' little sister. In the early 2000s, she was on All Dead, and then she ended up as a lead on Zoe 101. To be honest, I almost was going to boycott the movie because of not supporting Jamie anymore. Literally, Jamie is the real main reason of why this movie is a failure, which is surprising because she's the main character. It's been speculated that she's the reason why the TV show ended back in 2008 because of being pregnant at the age of 16. She's the main reason why everything has crumbled. I feel that the main reason why she wanted the movie to happen was to get her name back out there and have something relevant to her name. The movie was completely unnecessary and didn't have to be made. I think she wanted to do this project because she's desperate for attention and wants something on her resume. She's trying to make herself look good, but it's not possible anymore when everyone knows what a shitty person she is. All of this is mainly because she bullied her co-star Alexa Nicholas behind the scenes on Zoe 101 and even somehow got the other cast members to gang up on her as well. Even Alexa Nicholas spoke out about this as well. It's been constantly highlighted all over social media and YouTube as well. So basically what happened was we know for season one and season two, there was problems with me and Jamie Lynn Spears. Okay. The controversy and drama around this show made Jamie look like a petty little brat. The other part of the controversy is that Dan Schneider, who created Zoe 101 back in 2005 and supposedly did not help the bullying situation on the show, he specifically told Alexa, this is not called Nicole 101, it's Zoe 101, and favored Jamie back then and still does. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Alexa still put in this situation, the culture is not okay. Yeah. Set. Yeah. They did not care. They said this is not called Nicole 101. It's called Zoe 101 and she has to suck it up. This is why certain actors are not in the reboot movie, like Alexa, who played Zoe's best friend, Nicole, and Paul Butcher, who played Dustin, who has also called 
Jamie out for being problematic. And he wrote on it that he would not even do a reboot anymore because of what has come out against Jamie Lynn. She's trying to revamp her career, but no one cares about her career anymore because of her actions and because many people believe she's using Britney for name power alongside this movie as well. And the world knows how bad everything Britney has went through and she's supposed to be her supportive little sister and instead she's not. So it's quite surprising how the movie Zoe 102 became the third most streamed movie on Paramount Plus within the last three weeks. So to be honest, her reputation and image is the worst it's ever been and because of the bullying drama and other accusations as well. Sadly, no one likes her anymore and she gives off bad girl vibes as well. Apart from the drama around Jamie, the cringy basic storyline doesn't help either. First of all, they make Jamie a producer on some show, of course run by males, who doesn't give a fuck on her input on the show. It sounds like typical Hollywood BS. They make her look stupid and unworthy of her career, which I didn't like. I didn't like the failed relationship between Chase and Zoe and how they made her get an actor who is Todd to play her boyfriend for Quinn's wedding. The continued romance between Logan and Quinn was the best part of the movie. It was cute how they used references from the old show for their wedding. I love Quinn Petsky! And I love Logan Reese! They also made Stacy and Mark a couple as well. It makes a lot more sense now considering that they were the outcasts and or the oddball characters on the show. Stacy, as a character finally got a better backstory considering she always got teased on the show for her used to be cotton swab obsession and always got hit randomly on the show. On the other hand, the most talked about romance was between Chase and Zoe, of course. To be honest, trying to get Zoe and Chase back together is just dragged out for too long and it's getting old. It's like they are trying too hard to make each other jealous with each other's significant others they take to the wedding. Also, I'm not giving out too many spoilers. However, there was a weird random twist with Todd's character in the movie. To summarize, it was weird, random, and poorly written and was mediocre at best. The best part was the feeling of nostalgia for bringing back old memories from the show. So maybe I would give this movie 5 stars out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10 for the feel-good moments and for the nostalgia of the movie, but overall with everything else, it would just average out to being 5 stars for me. Zoe 101 will always bring back good nostalgia memories for me. However, the reboot movie wasn't necessary and they should have just ended with the season 4 finale. And the fact that it took 15 years for them to make this movie and this is the best that they can come up with, I mean, it could have been a lot better. Also, all four seasons of the show put together are better than the movie. The show had its weird moments, however, it was more memorable, likable, and was better written. And there was no drama, obviously. Anyway, the movie is out on Paramount Plus if you want to watch it. If not, watch the whole series that is also on Netflix for three seasons and on Paramount Plus for all the seasons. Once again, thanks for listening and watching, and you'll hear me in the next episode.